Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Boosting Order Value. My name is Mike Fradkin and I'll be your host today. Before we get started, I want to mention this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website as well as our YouTube channel at a later time. In addition, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to enter those into your question panel as we'll be answering questions at the end of the session. With me today is Paul Terry. Paul is one of our longest tenured optimization consultants. We're also joined by Jim Rushforth and Kurt Myers, two of our optimization solution engineers. This webinar is part of a weekly series we've been holding where each week we focus on a specific optimization and personalization topic and we're sharing lessons we've learned with our customers that we think are valuable to pass on. Not ignoring the unique time in which we're living and working, however, we're also spending a few minutes each week outside of the theme to talk about the current and common challenges and trends that we're seeing across our customer base related to COVID. <clears throat> so today in terms of agenda, we'll lead with that. Then we'll move into this week's topic of boosting order value and then we'll answer any questions you have in either area at the end of the session. With that, I'm gonna turn things over to our optimization consultant, Paul Terry. Paul? Thanks, Mike. So today, the uh, week in optimization, uh, we, we still see a lot of uh, clients you know, dealing with the retail sea change, uh, all the changes in their industries brought on by the, the COVID uh, crisis. Uh, optimization teams, uh, they're being tasked with not only optimizing a website, but in playing a key role in, in helping entire industries uh, accommodate the major shifts in their businesses. Uh, E-commerce is struggling to fulfill orders still um, in a timely fashion due to a tsunami of, of online orders. Uh, sporadic uh, supply chain issues as well are impacting them. Now, we're seeing a, a temporary shift kind of away from A-B testing a little bit during this time uh, toward uh, functional changes um, and targeted personalization. Uh, you know, messaging such as we are open uh, during this time are really important to have prominently displayed um, along with uh, any, any operational changes uh, that uh, customers can expect. Uh, some of the functional changes due to the volume concerns that, uh, that our teams are dealing with are checkout queuing systems um, and, uh, for example, moderating uh, the availability of live chat, um, delivery times, uh, geo-based messaging, uh, depending on what facilities or uh, services that are open uh, or opening or plans for reopening, um, promoting uh, certain products uh, such as uh, video games and other stay-at-home products, um, donations uh, to people in need. Uh, a lot of these messaging, uh, and are, again, these are targeted mostly geographically, but, uh, but also in other ways, depending on the specific uh, uh, businesses. Um, optimizing uh, buy online and pick up in store uh, programs, curbside pickup, extremely important to a lot of our uh, retailers. Um, and, um, you know, as, as we go back to normal, as some stores open up in different geographic regions, uh, these programs are going to continue to be important uh, to communicate, uh, to maximize the services uh, that they provided, and to make sure that that communication happens um, and, and happens early. Um, extending free periods, uh, for, for, I'm sorry, extending free return periods uh, during lockdown uh, is also uh, something that's very common, uh, helping people feel more comfortable in this time, uh, making purchases. Um, as we return to normal, uh, probably any A-B tests that are run uh, are likely to be rerun um, uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months uh, to, to see how uh, those, those uh, behavior changes hold up or don't hold up. Uh, as we go back to the normal period. So that's basically this week in optimization. Um, we're still grappling uh, with, the, with the crisis in retail and being asked to do a lot more, uh, which, is, uh, which is challenging, but also uh, rewarding uh, in these times for our optimization teams. Kurt, I mean, not Kurt, why did I say Kurt, Mike. Okay, um, boosting order value. Let's talk a little bit about boosting order value. That's our topic for today. Um, we've got several um, kind of areas here that I wanna talk about. Let's uh, go to the next slide here. So basically the two common goals in e-commerce optimization um, are getting uh, more people to buy, right? We wanna boost conversion. And the other one is getting people to buy more. Uh, and that is an average order value. Uh, generally, uh, it, it, that's how we, we measure this. 
is average order value. Um, always, when we're boosting order value, um, um, along with basically every everything that we do, our attention is uh, optimiz optimizing for conversion. It's always low-hanging fruit. It's generally where we put our, our efforts, and it's always boosting conversion is always the first step um, in boosting average order value. Uh, these things are sometimes in conflict, the conversion and, and average order value. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, get, get you to buy more uh, and get you to buy, right? So uh, those things sometimes are in conflict, but not always. Um, the first rule uh, of, of boosting, um, the, the first rule of, of boosting average order value is always boosting conversion, making it easier for users to find what they're looking for, making it easier to understand why a product should be purchased, and making it easier to check out. Um, in e-commerce, no matter what you're testing, always measure um, order value, um, and always measure items per order. Even if you're way up in the funnel, even if you are uh, uh, optimizing a landing page, um, these things are gonna give you clues uh, is into some of the unexpected behavior that you may not be uh, uh, ready for, may not be expecting, um, in terms of the types of products that are purchased, the number of products that are purchased, all of these clues will go into helping you understand why you see a change in average order value. So um, I want to talk a little bit about terms that, uh, that we use in measuring. We have conversion, uh, we have revenue per visit, and average order value. So conversion is a, the percentage of users or visits who convert. Um, revenue per visit, that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And it's, um, it's one that a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks take a look at. It's one I generally don't think is as valuable. Uh, revenue per visit, uh, depending on what we're doing, um, we measure um, an order can span obviously multiple visits. And so uh, revenue per user, I think is a lot more valuable. Um, whenever we make a change um, high in the funnel on a landing page, on a search page, on a browse page, um, you know, even on a product page, when we make those, we introduce those variations high up in the funnel. If we're judging success uh, of uh, an A/B test low in the funnel, such as uh, order value or conversion, it's always a good idea to look at um, uh, to look at revenue per user as opposed to just revenue per visit. Looking at anything on just a per visit basis can give you a brighter, um, a uh, kind of a brighter change. What happened? On that, on that visit, on a particular visit, especially the first visit, the first look. Um, but really, at the end of the day, what we want to do is, is we want to boost uh, average order value um, of, of users, of people. We want to change people's behavior, right? And so that average order value per user uh, is uh, really where, where we want to, to look to uh, when we're trying to uh, change users' behavior. Um, as opposed to just uh, revenue per visit. So I, I think perhaps the best way to boost order value is their strategic algorithm uh, chosen, uh, strategic algorithms implemented and the placement of product recommendations. You know, this is a sales process and the sales process online is in many ways identical to the sales process that you would use if you were um, in a store and you were assisting a customer in your store um, and we're you know we're always attuned to what they're looking at what they're thinking uh, in terms of uh, the products they're looking at the mix of products they're looking at and if we were standing over their shoulder very politely um, assisting them uh, we would make recommendations based on what they're looking at what they've already placed in their cart um, you know, in, in terms of product recommendations. So in many different ways, we can, we can make product recommendations, right? Um, when we're promoting ex uh, more expensive products in search and browse, right? Uh, you can, um, your default search order, right? If you're searching for a particular product, you can, uh, depending perhaps on that user, perhaps on their history, um, what they've looked at and purchased in the past, you can bring back the search results, the default search order differently depending on that user. 
um, or depending on the types of products that you want to promote. In, in, in some cases, that might be a, a higher level product. Um, you can test that. Um, bundles, product bundles, uh, promoting bundles of uh, either combined products or uh, larger quantities of some items is a way to, uh, to uh, bring more value to the user. So value proposition, uh, a key element in um, understanding um, the services that you're providing your, your users and hopefully your customers. So communicating your, as a retailer, your value proposition is especially important when you're testing a lift and conversion, right? You want to make sure that this person knows that it's a safe, that, that, that this site is a safe place to shop and that you have the best mix of products, the best warranty service, the best uh, checkout, the safest, the, the payment options. Um, these are what the, uh, the, the retailer's uh, value proposition uh, is communicating that, making sure that that's understood from the landing page to the thank you page. When we're boosting uh, uh, order value, um, we're going to take it one level down and talk about the product's value proposition, right? Um, we're, you know, this is a more expensive product, perhaps. Why, is it bring, why does it bring more value to you? Why is it something you should consider? A bundle. Why is this bundle? Um, more important uh, for you? Why is it going to bring more value? Um, quantity. Um, you're buying a, an object that maybe has you know, 100, uh, 100 of the items in the package. Well, you might want to consider two or 300 item packages because that's going to bring more value to you. Um, it's going to boost your, your average order. It's going to bring more value. Those things go hand in hand and they must go hand in hand. So communicating that early Communicating that at the proper time when they're considering a product uh, is important. Um, an, another kind of thing in here is, you know, we, we test we test variations sometimes just blanket. Maybe we'll target users based on the devices they came from, the geographies they came from, um, or their purchase history. But another one to consider is dynamic personalization, right? So. Um, Product recommendations, when you, when you are going to um, uh, kind of help this person along in what they're doing, again, we're standing, we're standing just off to the side, being of service to this user in our store, uh, to this customer in our store, to this user on our website, right? Same thing. Um, when they put something in their cart, we know a lot more about them, right? We know uh, the type of product they're interested in. We know the price point within the product category uh, that they're interested in. Uh, and so testing uh, different variations, introducing these variations at different uh, points in the buying process, in the funnel, uh, can help us maximize uh, the value that we bring to them. Right Now that I know you're serious, let's talk a little bit more about why you should spend even more than you're already saying that you want to spend. And we can do that intelligently to bring more value to optimize the, 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 uh, the order that, that is going to be coming. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about making it easier to buy. Um, sometimes it's a, we, we see a, uh, a negative lift. Sometimes we see a positive lift in order value if we optimize conversion. Um, why not look at an example here where, um, we provide more information, this, this, uh, this retailer provided more information about a product uh, that led to um, an increased uh, average order value. So this one uh, is a, uh, a, uh, a manufacturer of plastics goods. Um, and what they did was they gave more information uh, to, a, uh, uh, to a product where, um, Instead of just saying uh, this product's the, this product starts at thirty dollars, um, and then if you select the product, you can select uh, the quantity of the product. And this particular these particular uh, products are are plastic bags and other containers where you can you can buy a, you know ten or a hundred or a thousand. So instead of just saying they start at twenty twenty dollars. Um, they tested two variations up to $100, or they'd give a range 
you know, this product comes in packages between 20 and a hundred dollars. That's what they did. It was an ABC test and let's look at the results in doing this, uh, in showing this, um, uh, these, these different price points, uh, on the, uh, on the listing page. Um, they saw a with the, the winner here was the one where it was a range. So this product is a, a 20 to 40 or 20 to a hundred dollars. Uh, they gave more information, right? They saw a, a 20% increase in revenue per visit, $14,000 additionally uh, in the test period alone, an 11% lift in add to cart and a 10% lift in product page views. So not only did they show more products because they showed more information, they were more helpful, um, but they sold more products and they got uh, a revenue per visit uh, boost of 20%. So a lot of times these things come in uh, average order value, even though in this case they weren't necessarily intending just to boost average order value. Of course, they wanted to sell more products, but they actually ended up uh, doing both, right? So it's a, um, uh, it's a, it's a win, win, win. You, you provide more information when you're more helpful uh, surprise, surprise, you're more successful. Um, and so that's that one. I want to look at another one uh, dealing with bundling. So uh, this is kind of a, a strange bundle, but it's really important. Um, this retailer um, uh, provided a, uh, a credit card option um, that would uh, provide uh, in, in certain areas of the country where they were able to do this um, an incentive uh, to use their credit card, um, they would reduce the sale price by uh, the amount of uh, tax, sales tax that would be, that would be owed for the sale. Um, and so what this did uh, was in, in the cart page, they introduced this concept where, okay, your order is going to be $100. Uh, and the tax on your order is going to be, say, $20. Well, if you, and they, they for, for the specific order, they laid out uh, the credit card uh, application uh, uh, offer and said, uh, for this order, you're going to save $20 uh, if you uh, use uh, our credit card. Uh, and so what it ended up doing is amazing. Uh, let's look at the results here. They, um, they actually got an 82% lift in credit card uh, offer uh, uh, detail links. They, they more than doubled credit card applications. Um, and they, again, they saw a, a 3% lift in average order value. But we're going to dig down a little bit into this because if you look, they, the average product that was purchased was a three, was 3% three uh, more expensive than without uh, the, the credit card offer. Um, so they opened up and they said, uh, hello, customer, you've actually got more money to spend now. Um, and this particular retailer was a photography retailer. And, um, you know, there's a large range of, of, of products. You can, you can buy, um, you know, basically the same uh, type of product. There's a range in, in price. And this actually lifted uh, not only the average order value, but the average priced item because now the user could spend more and they could get that better camera, right? They could spend a little bit more. Just during the time here, the, I think it was about 27 days that this uh, test ran, they saw a $700,000 uh, additional revenue just during the, 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 the time of the test, not to mention when they rolled this out, what they saw going forward. So, you know, here um, I'm calling this a bundle because uh, it's, um, you know, if you get their credit card, then they're going to add even more value. Again, adding more value, the retailer's value proposition uh, in this case, a specific, uh, we won't really call it a product, but it's a service, um, bringing more value to the table, making sure you communicate that value proposition, good things will happen and you'll, you'll see an average order value lift. Um, so those are our, our two, um, kind of, uh, examples here where we can see boosting. Um, I want to return back to another one, the, um, you know, product recommendations. Uh, product recommendations uh, have been around a long time. Um, you know, uh, customers who have looked at this product also looked at these products. Customers who bought this product also bought uh, th these other products. You may also consider these products uh, that might have interest you based on what you're looking at. 
Um, SciencePec is, is really uh, taking product recommendations to a new level. Uh, we are primarily a testing company. We, we have a lot of uses for SiteSpec, but uh, with our new product recommendations uh, features, um, you're able to really explore the wide range of possibilities of product recommendations. The algorithms, uh, the types of algorithms that you can use, you can personalize those algorithms based on the particular users you're talking about and their own purchase histories and also where they are in their purchase uh, decision. Um, and also the placement of these, you know, we, we see a lot of success placing recommendations, of course, on the product page, on Add to Cart, on the cart page itself, um, but also, you know, different landing pages, targeting users, uh, of all different, there's many, many different ways to target users for experiences. And those experiences can be certain niche implementations of product recommendations. So this is a, I think, again, formal product recommendations kicked to the higher level with testing. Um, will really show you, um, the, I think, the best way uh, to, to boost your order value. So I think we're going to take a look at this. Um, I think we have uh, an example here where we can uh, we can show this. Yeah, hi there. Um, thanks, Paul. I, I appreciate the uh, the the uh, the intro. So I'm going to share my screen and want to make sure uh, that you can see my uh, it's our our site spec UI and our dashboard page. Paul, can you see that? Okay. Yeah, I can. Thank you. Great, great. So um, I think the purpose here really is to show you how easy it is to build uh, a product recommendations module really anywhere on your site. And, and the way you do that is, is very much like you do any campaign, whether it's an A-B test, a multivariate test, uh, personalization campaign, and in this particular case, uh, product recommendations. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a campaign that we have that that uh, is 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 running in our, our demo environment and um, just like every other campaign that you would do you create you know or complete four categories uh, of, of the campaign uh, general which is really the, the the type of campaign naming the campaign creating a hypothesis uh, variations uh, if you think traditionally in an a B testing environment that would be you know what's variation a versus variation B uh, in this particular case, our variation is going to be inserting a product recommendations module. Uh, the next are metrics is what are we actually trying to measure about this campaign that we're going to run? And then the fourth category, our audiences, is actually who is going to receive this. Is everybody going to receive it? Is it a subset? Is it a particular group? What, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the examples of uh, product recommendations. So, so in this variation, <clears throat> we have uh, the original site that's been, uh, there's no treatment uh, on this. And, and let's take a look at that first. Okay, so as you can see, there's uh, no product recs on this page. And what we'd like to do is insert product recommendations just below this nutritional information and just above the ratings and review section. So um, we're gonna show you what that looks like or show you the example once we've, we've done that. And now we can see that we've inserted uh, this just for you product recommendation module. And you know the data for all of the product recommendations is based on in session and past session user behavior. So, now, how do we build that uh, module? So we'll take a look at this. And the first uh, piece of creating the actual variation or, or, or the recommendation is to where are we going to place this? Um, what trigger are we going to use in order to, to create the recommendation? In this particular case, uh, we're using a URL as defined here, um, but we could have also chosen a couple of other different, uh, you know, so, scenarios, for example, a geo or, or visitor behavior or something like that to trigger off the, the product recommendation. You also have the ability to add additional variables here uh, uh, through, through the, the triggering uh, method of this. 
So the second piece is uh, creating the algorithm that's going to drive those product recommendations. Uh, first, the page type. Um, we're going to select uh, the product detail page uh, for this. And then we're going to select an algorithm. In this per particular case, product detail pages lend pretty well uh, with personalization. So we're going we're gonna to select that algorithm. Uh, then we're going to select a template, right? So the way that this is going to appear on the page. Uh, the really interesting part here is our professional services team during implementation works with you to create uh, templates that are stylized to your site, your page, whatever it may be, uh, to match perfectly. And, uh, you know, there's really no limit on the amount of templates you can create or how, or how they look. Uh, and then naming the heading, right? So, so having a name on top of that particular module. And then finally, uh, what element on the page? Where are we placing that on the page? Uh, and we have the option to place it um, uh, with that, with that uh, selector uh, before, inside, or after uh, that. Okay, so the next thing, just to kind of show you how easy it is to, to do this, is we'll go ahead and, and build a product recommendation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy uh, the one that we have here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename that to uh, people also like. And then we'll go in and make a couple of adjustments. So the first thing is we're going to keep it on that same URL. Um, keep it on the same page. We're going to change the algorithm to people also like. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great algorithm for, for this, again, uh, page, as opposed to, say, complementary, which would work really well on, say, a shopping cart, right? So you're checking out uh, and you want to see products that are complementary to the things that are in your cart, you would select that one. But in this particular case, we're going to select uh, uh, people also like for the product detail. And then uh, we're going to change the heading to people. also like. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to place this one just after uh, the first one. So then we'll go ahead and take a preview to see what this looks like. Of course, you do a preview before you would launch any campaign or, or, or turn it live. And now we'll take a look at the page and we'll see that we have two uh, recommendation blocks on this page. Uh, again, based off of, of, of user behavior. Uh, and keep in mind that when we create or when you create uh, the product recommendations modules, um, there's, no, there's no need for any internal development resources. All, all, of, all of that we just did here can be completely done within the site spec UI. Okay, well, that's what I have. Uh, Paul, back to I you. Think that's, I think that's amazing because you can use all of SiteSpec's technologies, uh, you know, w where you're, you know, looking at all the entire site and all the places you can put it, you can target different users for different recommendation strategies based on the personalization that's already built in, right? That's, uh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Paul. So uh, I just, we've got a little bit of time left. We have a couple questions in the question box. I want to make sure we can get to folks. And, and a reminder, because I, I know there were um, a few folks that, that uh, joined us a little late. Um, feel free if you have any questions about anything that, that Paul or Kurt has talked about to put that in your question panel. And I'll feed those to them and see if we can get as many of those answered. Um, first question we have here, I think is for you, Paul. Um, are methods for boosting order value always specific to each site? Or are there some common things every site should look at when they start to test? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you're going to know your business better, and there are going to be things that will be specific. But some of the common things, uh, let's see, that I would say are common to everyone, uh, product recommendations, obviously, um, search, uh, default search order. Uh, as products come down, you can modify those and personalize those. Um, and then those value propositions, those are always going to be true and always going to be important, either at the retailer or the product level. Again, uh, the, the, the most common thing that you should think about is bringing more value and communicating more value uh, to the customer in terms of um, how they can either buy a larger product uh, or, or buy a, a, a higher end product that will bring more value to them. Great. 
Um, I think we got really time for maybe one more, one or two more here. Uh, I've got a question here. Again, I think this is probably for you, Paul. We've been optimizing and personalizing our site for some time. What are some of the things you see more mature testing programs experimenting with to continue to drive higher order totals and higher conversion? So, you know, we see a, a natural maturation of uh, testing programs and, and uh, of sites. Um, I would imagine that if you're mature, uh, you've gotten those, those uh, easier ones out of the way. You've made it as easy as possible uh, for users to find the products they're looking for and to actually get through uh, with the purchase. Uh, but make sure you're doing that on all devices. Um, things are moving rapidly uh, in retail. Uh, we have many clients uh, selling items uh, on on smartphones uh, and tablets that uh, that you might not expect. So keep an eye on who your users are, where they're coming in, what what, what devices they're using, and make sure you optimize uh, for those those devices. Um, and that includes uh, boosting order value and conversion and and general usability of your site. Um, refill programs, scheduled ordering or more advanced techniques um, that uh, we see, uh, especially in retail. Um, uh, you know, uh, again, being that, bring, being that value add, being that, that, uh, uh, that store clerk, uh, bringing that value, sir, can I, can I uh, send that to you once a month kind of thing? Um, and then advanced personalization. Uh, once, you, once, you're opti once you optimize your site, uh, for everybody, um, that's that's got to be first, I would imagine. But but then, optimizing for individual groups of of users, whether it's a small group or large group, based on geography, based on their history, um, there's generally a lot of gold in, in in those hills. If you can make your site work better for a particular user based on who they are and what their interests are, uh, you'll you'll go a long way. Those are some of the things. I guess uh, that we see for more mature testing programs and more mature sites uh, as they uh, as they continue to optimize. Great. I got one last one, and then and then we'll let folks go. Uh, boosting order value seems to be focused on retailers, uh, but I also enjoy applying use cases and strategies and success stories from other industries to mine, non-retail. Uh, how would you say this could be helpful to apply to non-retail industries? Well, again, it, it's all about that value proposition. If you are, for example, um, a lead gen site, um, and you are promoting, say, a, apartments or or um, services. Um, it's all about um, bringing that value, and that I guess that's where uh, the best thing I want to leave with everybody is making sure that um, uh, you are bringing your value to bear. The services value you can upsell uh, services, um, you can uh, upsell higher end products, um, and Basically, make your store uh, the best store for that user and also the best store for this other user. Always about, no matter whether it's uh, whether you're in retail, whether you're in uh, lead gen or, or service uh, promotion, um, knowing your user, watching them along the way, and as, you know, taking what you know about them from the past and taking what you know about them since they first uh, hit your landing page continue to personalize that site uh, and continue to, to bring more value uh, to the user. Thanks, Paul. Well, we are, uh, we're out of time here, so I, but I, I do want to thank everyone for joining us today. If you have additional questions or if you want any further information on today's topic or about SiteSpec or anything that we discussed today, please feel free to email us at info at sitespec.com. Um, we'll try to be quick in getting back to you to, to answer any of those questions. Uh, we hope you'll join us next week for next week's topic, reducing cart abandonment and boosting checkout. Uh, until then, we wish you and your family continued safety and good health. Have a great day.